Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to Criticam. Today I've got an absolute treat for you. That's right, remember in our last video when we were talking about knobtail geckos? Yes, we were talking about knobtail geckos. And in fact, these beautiful little guys right in here have laid a couple of eggs. A little bit unexpected, but a couple of eggs. So we were lucky enough to grab those eggs, put them in an incubation tub, and then put them in the incubator, and here we are at about 53, 54 days later, they've actually decided to come out and say hello to the world. That's right. And it's absolutely amazing to see these gorgeous little faces. And they're, they're dropped dead gorgeous, obviously, but they just want to get out into the big wide world and see what's waiting for them. So we're going to let them out of this tub right here, get them out, and we're gonna set them up. Now, I'm gonna take you through how I like to raise my baby knobtail geckos. So I particularly use a rack system, very easy, good temperature grades, makes the animals feel nice and secure, and also, you know, we've got a nice long tub for them. Now, I know it's pretty controversial, but I do like to use sand as a substrate for my geckos. And I know all over the world, people lose their mind when it comes to this stuff. It's almost like the Black Plague right here. And I don't know why, really. I mean, in case you've never gone out into the bush here in Australia and looked around, well, I think you maybe you need to do that because substrate being sand, nice, fine sand, is a natural thing here in Australia. And believe it or not, when you go out into these sandy areas, you'll actually find knobtail geckos. It's crazy, I know. Now, we use these plastic hides. Makes it nice and easy for the geckos. They can get in there, um, get underneath it, feel nice and secure. Obviously, you know, these guys typically live amongst tussock grasses and all that sort of stuff and they build little burrows and all that. But at the moment, they're babies. We want to make sure that they're, um, you know, eating exactly what they want and exactly how they need to make sure that they're eating on a regular basis. Very important. Um, and these guys can be kind of savages. Now, <laughs> we always consistently leave shallow water bowls inside the tubs. Now, they do get misting, but I actually find the, the, the water bowls to be very beneficial. Uh, they've always got access to water and um, they're not relying on us to spray them all the time. So that, therefore, you know, when we're talking about the wretched sand again, um, I really believe if the animals are properly hydrated, sand's never gonna cause an issue. I know a lot of people would have problems with impaction. Maybe your temperatures are slightly a little bit too high. Maybe you're not giving them enough water-based foods. Maybe you're just not giving them enough water either. And um, that's causing some issues making them a little bit drier and very hard to pass this through. Now, believe it or not, some species of animals, in particular reptiles, regard things like sand, which is a substrate. So let's look at bearded dragons. Bearded dragons do something called substrate licking. They actually come down off a branch, grab down on the ground, and they'll sort of stick out their tongues and lap up some sand. And they'll use that to for a few different things, really. Um, there's a lot of, lot of speculation that maybe they're using that to mark their territory, which is sort of a little bit weird. Um, maybe it's a territorial thing. Um, but the reality is um, you can imagine eating a lot of insects. There are a lot of hard-bodied things. And the sand actually helps to break down the food part of the digestion. And as long as the animal's properly hydrated, it's going to be able to lick that sand up, swallow it, help break down the food item and pass it through. So it's almost like a big chunk of fiber going through the body. Um, we look at snakes, snakes eat whole bodied animals and on rare occasions, you know, you see this big pile of fur coming out amongst the feces. That's the roughage pushing everything else out. And crocodilians also do something very similar where they will actually ingest small rocks to help break down food items and they'll pass them through the, through the body as well. So it's not unheard of for sand or any other substrate to be eaten by animals and being passed through. So, taking that into mind, you know, like, it's sand, guys, don't lose your mind. It's, it's not that critical, really, you know, like, we can't go too crazy against it. But um, more importantly, look at these two little guys. They are absolutely chewing at the bit to get out. And um, who can blame them, really? You know, they've been stuck inside this tub not that they really knew anything else because they were inside the egg for about 50 odd days. But um, look at them now, waiting to get out. 
Come on, guys. One at a time. Don't fight. There goes one guy. The other guy makes a break for freedom. And there they go. So, we just drop them in the tub. Now, once these guys go into their rack system, the temperature inside the rack around about the hot spot here will be around about 30 to 31 degrees, and right up to the cool spot where the water bowl is will be about 26 to 26 and a half degrees Celsius. That's right guys, Celsius. That's how we speak here in Australia and most of the modern world, Celsius. I know it's a bit, bit upsetting. So we're gonna take these guys, um, and I mean, they're, they're absolutely gorgeous little creatures. I mean, they're beautiful little things. And they're ready for action. You know, these guys um, basically want to eat straight away. So we'll take them in here and um, put them in the rack. Although, be it, you know, one-handedly, but we'll get them in the rack like this. And there they are. Absolute gorgeous little monsters. Yep, they're on the prowl for some tucker. So they're going into the rack, gonna get some water, put the water in there, give them some food, and let them enjoy their new little setup. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those absolutely drop dead gorgeous little babies. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna put the water and the food in right now, and you're gonna see exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna love it. I hope you guys enjoyed today. Uh, make sure you hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching Criticam.